Hey folks, this is Mr. Ward. Welcome to Unit 8B on logarithms, one of your favorite things, I'm sure. But again, as we talked, you have to be able to undo things. You have to be able to have inverse functions. If you have exponents, you need logarithms. And like we always talk, you have to first know how to do things numerically before you can do anything else. Then we'll follow by graphically. Then we'll do analytically, like solving equations. And lastly, we'll do applications. The same strategy that we've used for all of our functions. So before we do anything, how many of these can you do? In other words, just crunching numbers. When you learned how to multiply, what's 3 times 4? When you learned how to divide, what's 12 divided by 5? Things like that. So look at these and you say, wait a minute. I can do some of these. Maybe I can't. Maybe I can do them all. Maybe I don't even know what this word logarithm means. All right? So log base 3 of 27 equals x. So the x is over there. Then if you jump down to 4, ln of e equals x. What does that mean? Then 5, the x is now the subscript for logarithm. And number 8, the argument log base 2 of x equals 5. So x is all over the place. So if you can solve them, wonderful. If not, let's put a couple tools in your toolbox right now, and we'll be able to crank through these eight. We could do these as like a mad minute, if you will. We'll just keep cranking through logarithms. So what's it mean? Well, first of all, the power to which a number must be raised in order to get some other number. What I like to say is, what is the exponent? We're always looking for the answer to be the exponent. And another thing is it's an inverse of an exponential. If y equals a to the x, then log base a of x equals y. And lastly, why do we use them? Well, things like sound is measured logarith on a logarithmic scale. Richter scale for earthquakes is logarithmic. Brightness of stars and acidity to alkalinity, the pH in chemistry, is also a log model. So I'm going to move this box a little bit out of the way here, and let's start doing these. Okay, so that means what is the exponent? Let me read this again. Log base 3 of 27 equals x. What is the exponent you raise 3 to to equal 27? that becomes a little more doable. And you go 3 to the first is 3, 3 to the second is 9, 3 to the third equals 27. I solved that one. Log base 8 of 1 8 equals x. 8 to what power? I'll put an x there. Equals 1 8. How do we make it to flip? Oh yeah, we make a negative power, so x would equal negative 1. Log base 8 of 1 8 equals negative 1. No base. But we remember from our number system is base 10. So that's really saying 10 to what power equals 1,000? Obviously, the answer is x equals 3. So we're getting good with the x's out there. We'll skip 4 for a second. Now let's move the x's to down low. What does that mean? Log base x of 100 equals 2. 50? Do I divide 100 by 2? I don't know. Well, if I look at it this way, x squared equals 100. Ah, it must be 10. x to the 1 half equals 7. x to the 1 half is also known as square rooting. Square root of what is 7? Or, if I square both sides, I get 49. Log base 49 of 7 equals 1 half. And the last ones, let's move the x into the argument. Log base 3 of x equals negative 4. Not sure what that means unless I do this. 3 to the negative 4th is 1 over 3 to the 4th, which equals 1 over 81. Solving log expressions like that. We have to be able to be comfortable with what the log operation is. So I'll bet you're pretty good here. 2 to the 5th equals x. 2, 4, 8, 16 x equals 32. And the reason why I skipped this one is we're going to talk about ln and e in a little bit. We'll come back to it. All right, so we did some number crunching. We feel a little bit better about this idea of a log, okay? There's something else you can do. We call that thing that I rewrite it as around the world. 
log base b of x equals a because b to the a power equals x. What is the exponent? There's also something we're going to do later on, which is called exponentiating. And if I start with this, I take that base b and I make those reds the exponents, b to that, b to that, it cancels on this side, and you're left with x equals b to the a. Maybe not as obvious on this one, but we will do some examples later on that, that might work. Rewrite this one around the world, whatever you want to call it. I rewrite it exponentially is what I call it. Log base 3 of 9 equals 2 because 3 squared equals 9. If I exponentiate this side, I'm going to go 4 to that equals 4 to that. They cancel and I'm left with 1 equals 4 to the 0 equals 1. 1 equals 1. All right, so now there's another method that we're going to do solving equations with that we're going to need a tool in our toolbox. What happens if it's not a nice easy one? What are you saying? 5 to what power equals 20? Well, 5 to the first equals 5. 5 squared equals 25. So I'm going to guess maybe something like 1.7. And how you can do it on your calculator, you can do it two ways. The new calculator allows you to do this thing called log base. So if I go, actually, where is it? I don't even remember. Log base, I think it's math all the way down. Let's see. There it is. Log base. So log base 5 of 20 equals, let's see what kind of number I get, 1.86. Makes sense. And then I can check it by raising 5 to that power. 5 to the second answer. The number we just got exactly equals 20. Okay, but this calculator didn't used to be able to do that. You used to have to do something different. And that's called the change of base rule. And to find log base A of X, or in this case log base 5 of 20, you can take the same log, of the x, or in this case the 20, divided by that log of y, or in this case 5. And the two we use, because the calculator likes them the best, are common log or natural log. There's our natural log, ln. Here's our common log. And if we, I'm going to put the first one in to show you that I still get that 1.86 value, ln of 20. LN. Oh, I've got to shrink my calculator down a little bit. Darn it. Oh, it's going to be a problem. Sorry, guys. But you got to take my word for it. All right. LN of 20 divided by LN of 5. Ah, let me do one more thing. I can go to my computer and fix this. Sorry, I'm wasting time. There we go. Now I got it. Beautiful. All right. LN of 20 divided by LN of 5. Notice the argument 20 is going to get closed, then divided by LN of 5. And I'll bet you I get that exact same decimal. Sure enough, 1.861353 and so on. So, again, I would ballpark this one. Log base 9 to 73. 9 to what power equals 73. Well, 9 squared equals 81, so I'm going to guess a number really close to 2. I'm going to say 1.95, and I can use that log base if I want to, math, all the way down to log base of 9 equals 70, of log base 9 of 73, and I get the number 1.950. Oh, what a great guess on my part. 1.95, if I round it, that'd be a 3. And again, I'm going to do the common log this time. Log of 73 divided by log of 9. And I better get that same exact decimal, sure enough. All right, that's just a, a calculation thing we're going to want to do later on. Uh, here's a warm-up. Actually, I'm going to skip it because I want to make sure we get through our stuff today. We're now... We've spent some time crunching numbers, so now we're going to start with some graph theory. 
And remember the question, what is a logarithm? The power you have to raise a base 2 to equal some number. What is the exponent? So what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to graph. Tell you what, let's do this. I'm going to graph y equals 2 to the x, a normal exponential. And you would say that table is right there. 2 to the second is 4, 2 to the first is 2, 2 to the zero is 1, 2 to the negative first is a half, 2 to the negative second is a quarter. What does that graph look like? It looks like this right here, this black one. Every exponential. What does it have? It has some components to it. What are the components? Well, we said the intercept is always the y-intercept, 0, 1. The domain is always all real numbers. But the range is only y greater than 0. It goes from the x-axis up. And the asymptote is y equals 0, also known as the x-axis. Well, if I took these two and switched them, y equals 2 to the x and x equals 2 to the y, I would get the inverse function, the reflection over the line y equals x. So if I reflected every point, this dotted line, y equals x, right through the middle here. And I would get that red one. The ordered pairs, 1 fourth negative 2, 1 half negative 1, 1 0 2 1 and 4 2. And what that is, if you think about what we just talked about, x equals 2 to the y log base 2 of x equals y. That is the graph of log base 2 of x. What's true? Well, the intercept is now the x-intercept 1, 0. The domain is now greater than 0 because it has to be to the right of the y-axis. The range can be all real numbers. And the asymptote is a vertical asymptote, not a horizontal. The y-axis or x equals 0. That's true of every log parent function. The, the x-intercept is always 1, 0. Domain is always x is greater than 0. y can be anything, negatives or positives, and it's always got a vertical asymptote, x equals 0 or the y-axis. Okay? That's the graph of a log function. Key points in every log function are every log function. 1, 0. Base, 1. Base squared, 2. 1 over base, negative 1. Again, it's the inverse. It's the switching of x and y's with the exponential function. So let's graph a couple more. We did a basic one. Now let's do this one. I'm going to start, if I wanted to, with 3 to the x. Because I can get those easy. 0, 1, 1, 3, 2, 9, negative 1, 1 third. Log base 3 of x is the inverse of those. 9, 2, 3, 1, 1, 0, 1 third, negative 1. And again, the key points. 1, 0, the base 1, base squared 2, 1 over base negative 1. There it is. So when x is 1 third, y is negative 1. When x is 1, y is 0. When x is 3, y is 1. When x is 9, y is 2. It's not a radical graph. It goes forever. And I'd have to go out to 27 just to get up to 3. And that's a vertical asymptote, the y-axis. There's an arrow there. goes on forever. All right. If I compare different logs, how do they work? Well, the log base 3 compared to log base 7. Log base 3 grows a little faster because the first point is when x is 3, y is 1, whereas i got to go all the way out to 7 for the red one to get up to y1. But it also decreases a little bit faster as well. Just a basic shape between those two different parent functions. All right? Now let's do some transformations. What does this mean? Outside, same, up one. Add to the y. 
inside opposite, minus two is right two, I'm gonna add to the x.